Right now, the greatest chess player alive is not Magnus Carlsen. It doesn't even have a heartbeat. It's a cluster of code that never blunders, never gets nervous, and would destroy every single human player in existence. But here's the twist. If artificial intelligence has solved chess, why do millions still watch humans play every day? Why do we still cheer for Magnus, Hikaru, Alireza, and hundreds of others when Stockfish could crush them all without breaking a sweat? In this video, we're gonna travel from the dawn of computer chess to the modern streaming era, uncover how AI reshaped the game forever, and answer the ultimate question, what's left for humans in a world where machines can't lose? Before the machine. To understand how we got here, we need to step back. Long before real chess engines existed, the world was fooled by an illusion. In 1770, Wolfgang von Kempelen presented the Mechanical Turk, a wooden automaton dressed in Ottoman robes, seated at a chessboard. It amazed courts across Europe by defeating strong players and even figures like Napoleon and Benjamin Franklin. But the secret was deception. Hidden inside the cabinet sat a human master, controlling the moves. The Turk was not artificial intelligence at all. It was one of history's earliest examples of stage technology hype. In the 19th century, chess was a battle of books, memory, and pure human skill. Masters memorized thousands of moves, and new ideas were guarded like state secrets. By the mid-20th century, technology began to nibble at the edges. The first chess computers weren't strong at all. They were clumsy, mechanical, and easy prey for any decent club player but their existence planted a seed. Could a machine ever outthink the greatest human minds? Deep Blue and the Shattered Illusion. In the 1980s, chess computers were toys, but in 1997, everything changed. IBM's Deep Blue, a supercomputer the size of two refrigerators, faced Garry Kasparov, the reigning world champion and perhaps the most dominant player in history. Most thought Kasparov would swat it aside, after all, humans were creative, emotional, unpredictable. Computers were cold calculators. But when Deep Blue defeated Kasparov, it wasn't just a chess story. It was a warning. Machines were beginning to outthink us in our own games. The world champion, the symbol of human intelligence, lost to a machine. We, we very, I, I, what, are we missing something on the chessboard now that Kasparov sees? He, he does not look, he looks disgusted, in fact. He looks just... And he went on, and he should, and he should get uh, uh, an Oscar. <laughs> an award. Uh, and yeah. he should get $300,000. <laughs> and whoa! Deep Blue Kasparov, after the move C4, has resigned. Kasparov was convinced IBM had cheated. He said, I sensed an alien intelligence at the board. Conspiracy or not, the message was clear. Machines can surpass us. But what happened next? Instead of destroying chess, it triggered a wave of research. Universities, companies, amateur programmers. Everyone wanted to build better engines. Every advance forced players to reinvent themselves. The Age of Engines when Deep Blue defeated Garry Kasparov in 1997, the world thought it had witnessed the end of human supremacy in chess. But that moment was just the beginning. In the late 90s and early 2000s, engines rapidly improved. At first, programs like Fritz or Shredder were used as novelties by club players, but soon even grandmasters began to realize their power. With databases and engines combined, opening theory exploded. Entire lines that had been considered safe for decades were suddenly declared refuted overnight. What once took months of Grandmaster collaboration could now be tested in minutes by silicon. As computers grew faster, so did the engines. By the 2010s, Stockfish had become a near-omniscient force, calculating millions of positions per second. For the first time, humans had a tool that didn't just check for blunders, it exposed hidden resources, bizarre tactical shots, and defensive ideas no one had ever dreamed of. It was as if chess had opened a secret door to a much deeper universe. But the real revolution came with neural networks. Leela Chess Zero, trained not on human games but through self-play, introduced something shocking, style. Unlike the cold calculation of older engines, 
Leela began sacrificing pawns and pieces in ways that seemed illogical until the long-term compensation appeared many moves later. Its play was compared to the intuition of geniuses like Mikhail Tao, only amplified to an inhuman level. Then, AlphaZero took it even further. In just four hours of self-training, it reinvented centuries of chess knowledge, dismantling Stockfish in their famous 2017 match. The games were works of art sweeping pawn storms, fearless king marches, and attacks that felt alive. It simply played against itself millions of times, evolving into a monster. For many, it was the first time a machine's games were described not only as strong, but beautiful. And what it produced stunned the world. Queen sacrifices, pawn storms, attacks that looked more like art than science. Commentators said, this is not human chess, this is alien chess. The Age of Engines is more than just about power. It has transformed the very way chess is played and studied. Openings once dismissed as dubious have been resurrected because engines discovered hidden defenses. Positions once thought equal are now razor-sharp battlefields. Take the Sicilian defense, Najdorf variation. For years, lines like bishop g5 or bishop e3 looked dangerous for black. But engines proved black can survive and even counterattack. That's why the Najdorf is still a top-level favorite. Or the Petrov defense especially the classical attack with knight takes e5. Everyone thought it was just dull and drawish, until engines revealed sharp resources for black. Caruana used it to crush opponents in the 2018 World Championship match. And then there's the Berlin defense in the Rui Lopez. Before engines, it was called the Berlin Wall, a pure drawing weapon. Now, precise computer lines show black can play for more than equality. Engines also made early pawn moves like h4, a4, or g4, once ridiculed into powerful ideas in openings like the London system with h4 or the Najdorf with g4. Suddenly, their theory. So yeah, chess engines didn't just refine openings, they rewrote them. Every professional player now walks into tournaments armed with hours of computer preparation. Thanks. So, inspired by Alpha Zero, as you have to say every single time, I am going for um, the pawn on h6. Yet, this age comes with contradictions. Engines are both the greatest teacher and the greatest threat. They give us the highest quality chess humanity has ever known, but also the possibility of perfect, lifeless play if over relied upon. And they force us to ask, when machines have already reached perfection, what role is left for humans? This is the paradox of the Age of Engines, a time where chess is simultaneously solved at the highest level and yet more fascinating than ever for those who watch, play, and learn from it. Did AI kill chess? After AlphaZero's games were revealed, panic spread. Had chess just been solved? Would every opening now be reduced to sterile computer lines? The fear was real. Why study openings when Stockfish could instantly tell you the best line? Why marvel at Grandmaster sacrifices when a machine could always find the refutation? To some, it seemed inevitable. Humans would be reduced to spectators in their own game, while silicon brains quietly played perfect matches. Yet, here lies the twist. Instead of killing chess, AI breathed new life into it. Engines became less of a replacement and more of a partner. Yes, they can solve positions with perfect precision, but humans learned to use them as sparring partners, assistants, even coaches. Chess did not die, it evolved. In fact, human chess became more interesting. Chess.com gives H6 one question mark. It's a mistake, but it's, it's a yellow one question mark. Now this move should have 20 question marks because it allows me one, the game is over after queen h7. Check me. With the help of engines, grandmasters entered positions that once seemed impossible to navigate. They prepared opening novelties 15 moves deep, not to find the best move, but to find moves that engines rate equal, but which are fiendishly hard for another human to handle over the board. Instead of becoming robotic, humans doubled down on creativity, using engines to discover new resources and test psychological boundaries. So did AI kill chess? For a moment, it looked like it might, but instead it gave us a paradoxical gift, the strongest opponent humanity has ever faced, and at the same time, the greatest tool to push human creativity further. Far from dying, chess entered a new golden age, 
one where humans and machines coexist in a way no one could have imagined back in 1997. Humans and machines together. Before AI, preparation meant memorizing dusty opening books, checking ideas with coaches, and hoping you had the right surprise. Now, engines explore lines humans would never imagine. Grandmasters don't just use them to find the best moves, they use them to discover traps, complications, and psychological tests. Magnus Carlsen prepares equal positions that engines rate as zero because he knows the human struggle inside those lines. Hikaru Nakamura treats engines like sparring partners. He says training with them feels like fighting Superman you'll never win, but you'll become stronger. Engines became teachers. Instead of killing creativity, they gave humans new weapons. Also, sites like chess.com allow player of every rating to analyze their chess games with an engine, showing them their blunder, missed chances, or accidental brilliant moves. And that is exactly what you should do if you want to improve at chess. But in case you don't have premium on chess.com, the website winterchess.com allows you to analyze unlimited chess games completely for free. The Human Drama here are five reasons why we still watch human play chess. Emotion. When Magnus Carlsen leans back in his chair, eyes narrowed, you can almost feel the pressure through the screen. When Hikaru Nakamura shakes his head in disbelief after a blunder, thousands of viewers share that frustration. A computer doesn't sigh in disappointment, clench its fist, or smile with relief. Chess without human emotion would be like music without sound, technically there, but empty. Drama. Engines don't feel time trouble. They don't sweat when the clock ticks down. But humans, they panic. They blitz out mistakes. They let nerves control their hands. In a world championship, the tension isn't just on the board. It's in every heartbeat, every glance across the table, every whispered comment in the crowd. This drama makes the difference between watching perfect calculation and witnessing a true battle of wills. Entertainment. Let's be honest, nobody gathers around to watch Stockfish versus Leela for hours. The moves may be brilliant, but the story is missing. Humans give us entertainment value. Magnus bluffing in a dead position. I mean, what I did on the queen side with A5 sacking the pawn and, and so on, it was a complete bluff, but you know, uh, it worked. Hikaru losing his cool on stream. It's messy, unpredictable, and that's exactly why millions tune in. Relatability. We can't relate to Silicon. We can't cheer for a line of code. But when a young prodigy challenges a world champion, we see ourselves in that fight. We root for the underdog. We celebrate when a long shot succeeds, and we sympathize when nerves destroy a winning position. Chess is human because we can connect to the struggle behind the moves. Imperfection, perhaps the biggest reason. Mistakes. Engines don't make them, humans do. And paradoxically, that's what makes human chess beautiful. Blunders create chaos. Oversights open new possibilities. One miscalculation can turn a sure win into heartbreak or spark a miraculous comeback. The very flaws that engines avoid are the moments fans remember forever. So why do we still watch humans when AI is invincible? Because engines give us truth, but humans give us a story. And in the end, chess is not just about who finds the perfect move. It's about the journey of struggle, courage, and drama that unfolds across 64 squares. The New Golden Age. Today, we're living in a chess boom. Streaming platforms, viral clips, online tournaments, chess.com has reached 100 million users. And that three years ago, chess is bigger than ever. Engines didn't end the game. They redefined it. And together, man and machine have created the most exciting chess in history. The battle is over. Engines will never lose to humans again. But chess was never just about who wins. It was about the struggle, the beauty, the creativity. Machines have shown us the ceiling. Humans are still exploring the walls. And that's why in the age of AI, chess belongs to both human and machine. Not rivals, but partners in creating the greatest games of all time. If you are still watching, even though this video was a bit messy, consider to like and subscribe for more interesting chess videos.